Hey guys, Dr. Jack Audie here, and today I'm going to take you through a particular kind of T helper cell, and that is a TH1 cell. Um, and in this image here, we've got what's called an Elize spot. I'm just going to start with a quick breakdown of it because it's such a beautiful image. Now, a Elize spot is a little bit like an Eliza, except imagine that the cell is sitting on a layer of ca capture antibodies. So when the cell secretes a cytokine that matches the capture antibody, it will come out of the cell and immediately bind to the capture antibodies in the region around that cell. And the reason, and then we put a fluorescent detection antibody on top. And the reason why we do this is it tells us spatially which cells are secreting what cytokines. So in the green here, we've got IL-2, that's interleukin-2, and in the red here, we've got interferon gamma. And what we can see is when you add the green and red together, you get a lot of oranges. You get a lot of the yellowy oranges. Those are co-localization. And you can see that most cells ex that express IL-2 also express interferon gamma. And we're going to find out why that is in this video right now. Here we go. The first thing I wanted to talk to you about, whoo, I wasn't expecting that slide. Here we go. The first thing I want to talk to you about is rainbows, right? So here is a rainbow. Um, and we all know the colors of the rainbow is Roy G. Bear, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now, when you actually think about that, you start to realize that it's a little bit weird, right? Orange is halfway in between yellow and red, right? That makes sense. Green is halfway in between yellow and blue. You mix yellow and blue paint together, you get green. The next thing that you do is you mix blue and red together and you get purple. But for some reason, we've got two purples. We've got indigo and violet. And why that is, is because Isaac Newton came up with the whole Roy G. Biv thing and seven, he felt, was a holy number. You know, God created the world and everything in the universe in seven days, according to the Bible. Isaac Newton was a very Christian man, and so he felt there had to be seven colors because seven is a holy number, whereas 666 six, six is not exactly the holiest of numbers, which is how many colors there really could be. So he decided to cram another one in there. This is all kind of off topic, but it is interesting, trust me. But if we actually look at the rainbow here, can we really delineate single colors? Can we really say this is green? Like we could have shifted Roy G. Biv across left or across right. There is no really individual colors here in the rainbow. Um, what, we, what we can see is a full on continuum, uh, which could be divided up any number of ways. So why am I talking about we put a discrete system of Roy G. Biv over a continuous system and the reason is, here are the T cell types. We've got cytotoxic T cells, we've got T helper cells, and then we break them down into TH1, TH2, TH17, and T regs, right? Now, these were all essentially broken down with a process called flow cytometry, where we look and see what makes a cell unique and how can we break these cells up into subgroups uh, based on the proteins that are present on the cells. But since then, a new technology has come along called single cell RNA sequencing. Now, RNA sequencing allows us to evaluate exactly which of the 27,000 genes are turned off and turned on inside each individual cell. We can also see not just off or on, but how dialed up is each gene. And since single cell RNA sequencing has come out, we now start to understand that these subcategories that we've created are a little bit blurry. And what we've actually done is taken something that's probably much more closer to a continuum and kind of randomly broken them up into subgroups. Now, there are some subgroups that seem relatively um, uh, distinct, like the CD8 positive and the CD4 positive cells. But then once you get further down these chains, it seems to be a much more of a continuum. But in saying that, it's still a good principle in a shorthand language to talk about it, right? You don't want to be the guy who goes, look at that red house, and you're like, actually, color is a continuum, and so what is red, really? Um, we all use this language, and so it is important to know the discrete language, but know that there is a little bit of um, fudge here and there when we start talking about these cell populations as completely unique and 
monotonous so all th1 cells are exactly th1 cells it's not the case things are a bit more gray but because we talk about it like that and because we talk about it as discrete cell types i've got to teach you through it, i've got to take you through it because it is a good mental map to take something really complicated and simplify it just a little bit today we're going to be looking at the th1 cell which is an effective t helper cell um, so it's a it's a t helper cell that's had its tcr receptor it's, it's tcr activated and so now it is proliferated some of them go and become sort of dormant proliferative proliterative prolif Operative cells um, and they become memory cells and they're just really a clone of the original cell that got its TCR activated and then others uh, proliferate and actually go out and start to do what T helper cells do and they can be broken down into subcategories so now we're going to look at the TH1 subcategory so there's a T helper cell type 1 subcategory so the first question and the best sort of place to start with is what do they actually do what do T helper cells do? So all T helper cells do is, this is all of them, they detect antigens and cytokines. So they're detecting, they're responding to antigens and cytokines that have been secreted that they are now um, detecting with receptors on their cell surface. And then they release cytokines in response to that. So they collate the information of antigens and cytokines, and then they translate it into the production of a new cytokine and these cytokines um, regulate the immune response. So really they're taking in the information from the body, what kind of pathogen is it? Is it inflammatory? How, what, what cytokines are being released? Okay, I've detected all of that. Now I'm going to coordinate the response based on that by secreting a bunch of cytokines. And that's what T helper cells do. And T help, TH1 cells, they induce an inflammatory and cytotoxic T cell response, right? So there's no B cells in here. TH1 cells don't have a lot to do with B cells um, and antibody responses. They are more of a cytotoxic T cell responding, um, uh, to a cytotoxic T cell, uh, T helper cell. So there are T helper cells that generates cytotoxic T cells. I'm getting a bit tongue tied today, uh, but my voice is cracking, I can't start again. Um, and we've got TH1 cells that induce an inflammatory response as well in the innate immune system there. So let's have a look. Um, how do we get this response? How, how do we create a TH1 cell? So here we have a T helper cell, um, and it has detected an antigen from an antigen presenting cell on an MAC2 molecule. We know it's a T helper cell because it detects that MAC2 with a CD4 molecule. If it was a cytotoxic T cell, it would be a CD8 molecule, but it's a CD4 molecule, so that's how we know this is a T helper cell. Now, if this antigen presenting cell, like a macrophage, for example, had a PAMP detecting receptor, so a, path a pathogen associated molecular pattern uh, receptor, a pattern recognition receptor that can detect a PAMP, like TLR4, if it had detected uh, an LPS, it might start to release inflammatory cytokines. And one of these cytokines might be interleukin-12, right? So not only is this macrophage presenting an antigen to a T cell of a pathogen, it has also detected a pathogen-associated molecular pattern on its pattern recognition receptor called TLR4. It has detected LPS. This is just an example. It could be any of a number of... Um, pattern recognition receptors here, but this is just an example. It has detected uh, a PAMP. It will now release an inflammatory cytokine. So it's doing both things. It's antigen presenting and releasing inflammatory cytokines, and it's releasing IL-12. Now IL-12 will be detected by the IL-12 receptor on the TH cell, and that will make it into a TH1 cell. So it's both the TCR has been activated and its interleukin-12 receptor has been activated to create a TH1 cell. Now, once we get this T, uh, TCR activation and the IL-12 activation, and we get this TH1 cell, it is now going to coordinate the immune response. Um, it's both going to proliferate and coordinate this immune response, and it does so by uh, producing the cytokine interleukin-2 and interferon-gamma. 
Now, um, in a later video, I will release a big list of cytokines and what they do and cell types and what they do, and it will help sort of coordinate it in your head. It is a lot to remember, but these are the defining principles of immunology. And would you believe I've actually simplified it massively? <laughs> um, so I know I'm hitting you with a lot of information, but just uh, try, carry along, and I realize you'll probably have to go back to this video and back to the notes. So a Th1 cell is now producing interleukin-2 and interferon gamma. So what do these cytokines do? Well, interleukin-2 will cause uh, the proliferation of T helper cells and cytotoxic T cells that have also had their TCR receptor activated. Now remember, the uh, T cell receptor can only detect a single antigen, right? So these guys need to be the ones that can recognize the pathogen, right? That was originally um, uh, phagocytosed by the antigen presenting cell. So we're all responding right now to the same pathogen. We don't want the uh, proliferation of a T cell that contains a TCR receptor, a T cell receptor, I should keep saying, um, that contains a T cell receptor that doesn't recognize the pathogen that we're being invaded with at the moment. So you need T cell receptor activation, which is a specific antigen response that only a few T cells will be able to respond to that one pathogen. And we need the IL-2 signal, and that will cause massive cell proliferation of um, the TH cells and the TC cells. Now, there will be IL-12 floating around right now. So these T helper cells will then be exposed to the IL-12, turning them into TH1 cells, right? So we're going to get um, this massive self-proliferation process. And then we've also got, um, uh, sorry, I'll just quickly say that there's a little bit of a, um, uh, a difference depending on how much IL-2 is being released. If there's a low concentration of IL-2, the body says, um, this isn't an emergency, so we need just our memory cells to divide in case um, it gets worse, right? So we need a lot of cells just to be ready, but we don't have a huge amount of IL-2, so there isn't a rampant infection going on right now. So at a low concentration of IL-2, we get massive division of our memory T cells. So this is cell division, and in green, at a low concentration of IL-2, we get, some, we get our division of our T memory cells. But as the concentration increases, as we get to a high concentration, we get way more proliferation in the effector cells. A high IL-2 concentration means we are undergoing a massive infection right now, so we need effector cells. We need lots of effector cells, right? Now let's have a look at interferon gamma. So interferon gamma, if you remember, uh, can affect loads of cells. Lots of cells have the interferon receptors. Um, there's uh, several different kinds of receptors, and essentially they cause just a phosphorylation cascade, which is how most of these receptors work, including the IL-12 receptor, including the TCR. They all just initiate a phosphorylation cascade internally. Uh, you know, it's often specific for the receptor, the kind of cascade it is. But it's always, it's a, so often just a phosphorylation cascade, which then causes a change in gene expression. And we call these interferon stimulated genes, ISGs. Now, I go through this in detail in a previous video, but this is just a whole bunch of different cell types. And this is the expression level of the interferon receptor. And we can see that all the cells, all the cells uh, express these interferons. And so when the T cell, starts to produce the interferon, all the cells can detect it on their receptors and start initiating an antiviral response, typically. There's also a little bit of overlap with antibacterial, particularly intracellular bacterial responses. Um, but yeah, all these cells will start to produce um, ISGs, interferon-stimulated genes, that uh, will start flipping all those genes on, and that will create proteins, that are antiviral or antibacterial, so all the cells can get ready before they're infected. Um, and this is just a, a viral life cycle. And in the red here, in each of these little red stars, you can see here, all the way around here, those are different interferon-stimulated genes that can block the viral life cycle. So you can see that our body attacks this viral life cycle at every point um, along its life cycle, and all these genes are turned on by that interferon receptor being activated. 
and in a previous video we just looked at two examples here this one which um, changed the cholesterol makeup of the cell membrane which helped prevent viruses from fusing with the membrane and this zap protein that chopped up rna that um, had patterns that made it look like viral rna such as gu rich or gc rich um, rna were chopped up were, were latched onto which then triggered the chopping up of the uh, viral rna so this is an example of how the t helper cell starts to prepare our body for dealing with viral infections and a little bit bacterial infections um, and this is a macrophage. Macrophages also have the interferon gamma receptor. And in uh, macrophages, the interferon gamma receptor actually promotes inflammatory cytokine signaling, right? So um, if it was going to produce a little bit of IL-6 and a little bit of IL-1, which are inflammatory cytokines or TNF-alpha, it will once its interferon gamma receptor is activated, it will start to produce way, way more of those inflammatory cytokines. It also suppresses phagocytosis and resolution pathways, right? So the Th1 response is thinking phagocytosis isn't going to help us right now. We need to be initiating an inflammatory response. And that's why it's inflammatory and cytotoxic. So if we look at what does the Th1 response do in this, um, in this figure, which I covered in the previous video, we can see that uh, a TH1 response really helps with this, right? Because it's causing the massive proliferation of, of cytotoxic T cells. So it is going to kill those viruses because the cytotoxic T cells will kill host cells that are infected with those viruses. So it kills the factories that create the viruses. Um, it will help a little bit with bacteria, but not as much. And it can help with cancer as well because we get that... Uh, proliferation of those cytotoxic T cells that can attack um, aberrant cells that are producing um, non-cell antigens. Um, and it also downregulates phagocytosis, and phagocytosis is quite important for bacterial infections. So we can see, really, the Th1 response is much better at dealing with viruses, right? Um, intracellular pathogens like viruses. Because it doesn't, it, it doesn't have a major role in the antibody production um, over there. It doesn't have a major role in, in neutrophils. There's a different kind of T cell that really does this. Um, Th1 does to a little bit because it makes the macrophages produce inflammatory cytokines. So this happens a little, which is good, uh, but nowhere near as much as this other T cell that we're going to come across, the Th17 cell. Um, we'll come across that later. So, but you can, so you can really see that typically, typically. The Th1 response is mostly useful for viral infections and intracellular pathogens because it initiates those immune cells that kill our host cells that are, that are producing pathogens or are home to pathogens. Yeah, so this is why we call Th1 cells are an inflammatory response and a cytotoxic response organizing cells. So they organize and orchestrate that response by releasing the IL-2 and interferon gamma cytokines. They also release a bunch more, and I've just simplified that, um, but those are the two really prototypical Th1 cytokines. Okay, so up next, I'm gonna go over a tool, which is flow cytometry in the next video, um, to give you a deep dive into how do we research all these different cell types, Th1, Th2, you know, B cells, how do we research that? And we do it a lot, using flow cytometry. So I'll see you in the next video for that.